right, and welcome back. Tiffany, we're having so much fun. This is going by quickly. Yes, Phil makes it very easy to learn. Hello, and welcome back to Section 4 of the California Patient Movement Plan, the Federal Patient Movement Coordination. In Section 3, we learned that California uses the standardized emergency management system to communicate and coordinate throughout the levels of the state. However, when the state is unable to fulfill the needs and resources of the region, California will request aid from the federal government. So Phil here, he's sad because he's from California and he needs resources. So what do we do? We, we put together California Movement Tool Form 3, which is really from the state uh, OES to the federal government. And that basically says, federal government, we need some help. And then we use specific forms that the federal government gives us called RRFs, resource request forms, to dictate exactly what we want. So one of those things that we can order from the federal government is called the National EMS Contract. This includes 300 ground ambulances, 25 air resources, that's fixed wing and uh, rotary wing, paratransit vehicles, EMS personnel, and communication support. That all comes with basically the flip of a switch if we need it from the federal government. So in order to activate the national EMS contract, first thing we have to do is fill out RRF1 and our federal movement tools. And this is in the plan. Um, basically what this tool says is how many ambulances you need, how many paratransit you need, when do you need them, where do you need them. Next, we would also fill out the federal movement tool um, RRF2, and this form is essentially um, support to that contract. So if we needed to order pharmacists or liaison officers or um, overhead teams, things like that. So this slide will show you sort of the, um, some of the planning factors that we think about when we order one of these federal teams. Um, it takes them about six hours to activate. Um, 18 hours to start getting ambulances into the area, and then all ambulances basically staged, ready to go at uh, 36 hours. The next form we'll look at here is Federal Movement Tools um, RRF3, and this is used to activate the National Disaster Medical System. This is a full federal system to respond to medical incidents throughout the country. So let me sort of explain what this is. So the National Disaster Medical System, NDMS, um, is medical responders, uh, air uh, resources, patient ground evacuation resources, and definitive care resources, all responding and coordinated together under the federal umbrella. So let's talk about Form 4, which is how really Healthcare facilities and evacuating facilities can connect patients into federal aeromedical evacuation. So there's a minimum amount of data sets that the federal government needs. One is obviously our unique CUPS number, but it's also first name, last name, sex, date of birth, and whether the patient is a minor or not. Those are the minimum data sets that the federal government needs. So let's talk about the NDMS planning factors. These are really important factors that we have to look at. Um, when we activate the National Disaster Medical System. One is the state puts a request in. There's no federal boots on the ground until about 18 hours in. And then once the patient movement operations start, they can do about 140 a day um, with one uh, base of operations, and then that doubles with every base of operations thereafter. Okay, now let's talk about defense support for, of civil authorities, and this is really where the military starts getting involved. So the Department of Defense, civilians, the DOD contractors, and the National Guard all come together to create what they call uh, DIS commissions. These are activated by governors of states, and it's basically them saying, hey, we need help in our state, and we need the military to come in and help, so they can bring military airframes, gray tails, things like that to the, to the fight. Um, Next, we'll talk about the Joint Patient Assessment and Tracking System, JPATS. And really, this system is used by the federal government for um, patient tracking. It's part of the NDMS system, and it's basically what they use when they activate that system to track patients from state to state and across the country. And this is where we want to make sure and give them our unique CUPS number so when our patients go into their system, they're being tracked. Okay, so lastly, we want to try to put this all together and really show how this system works 
um, in sort of a picture form here. So patients from the field level, from area hospitals, from skilled nursing facilities, from impacted facilities that need to transport those patients out, they move those patients out via ground ambulance. And those will get moved to what the federal government calls a DASIF. That's a disaster aeromedical staging facility. Once they're at that facility, then they move into an aerial port of embarkation where they then get onto, as you can see here, an airplane and then they get flown to a federal coordination center um, somewhere in a non-impacted area of, of the country. At that point, they'll get loaded onto ground ambulances on the other end of the system and transported to definitive care, where they will finally um, get the treatment that they need um, in a non-impacted area of the country. And then once they're finally um, treated and back to uh, normal and released, then the federal government will then work to repatriate those patients all the way back to the originating place where they came from or send them home. So our last slide here, we're, we're gonna basically show how requests get sent uh, from the field level up to the federal government. So we always follow SEMS. Um, so at the field level, impacted health facilities will put the request into the MOAC program. MOAC program will then elevate that to the region, region to the state if needed, and then the state will work with the feds to make sure that all um, medical and health needs are getting met. This completes section four of the California Patient Movement Plan. Next up, we're gonna test your knowledge in section five. Ooh, that sounds scary.